Right, so I've just remembered that I haven't plugged the network in. So what I'm going to do is just log in to shut down. Um, just to be sure that I don't damage anything by typing in the network while the port is alive. So I'll just wait for this to shut down. Okay, so I'll just plug in the network lead and power it back up. So there goes the chime. And I've got the grub menu, I press enter. And there it is booting. So yes, yeah, booted a bit quicker this time because the network interface is up. So if I log in again, um, do life config for example, and yeah, it says that it's up the connection. Right, so we're ready to go now with the actual installation. Um, so I can get rid of this Linux from scratch tab, don't need that anymore. And what I need to do now is I'm going to open a new tab. Um, yeah, to get to the main Bit. Now, what I need to do, um, this, as I say, several things I need here. I need to get access to HTTP protocols, and um, I need a well. Initially, I need a browser. So let's look for that. There, somewhere here will be uh, text browsers. So you can find that. So text browsers. So there's two here called links, spelt differently. The one I use is this one, so I'll get that one up. And as you can see, the tarball that we need to download to get this working is at an HTTPS website, and that's no good. As you saw before, the only real um, tool or utility we've got to access downloading tarballs is FTP. So now let's take a look at wget, which is capable of downloading. So I'll search for this. And there it is. So let's look at that one. So that's got an FTP link. That's fine. So we can do that one first. So I'll just move that here. And the other thing I'll need is a tool called GPM, which is General Purpose Mouse Daemon. And that allows... Um, copying and pasting on the um, terminal. So these tools are giving us similar functionality as we would have in a GUI. We've got, we've got a browser which you'd normally use in a GUI and we've got GPM which is a, a, a tool for copying and pasting with a mouse again only in the um, terminal. And again you can see this has got um, a download link at FTP, but it's got a patch that's an HTTPS. So really, it looks like wget is the program we've got to install initially, as we've got links and GPM relying on wget as a dependency. Um, now there are other optional dependencies here and recommended. Now with dependencies in Beyond Linux from scratch, I always try to install the recommended dependencies and I decide with the optional ones whether or not they're required. Um, so for example GNU TLS further down here there are command explanations it says that if we use with SSL equals open SSL it allows the program to use OpenSSL instead of GNU TLS. So that's the default option. So if you decided you wanted to use GNU TLS, you, would, you wouldn't need this option here in the configure command. So you can see how GNU is optional. The next one, it says it's for the test suite, as this one is. 
but then you've got lib IDN, it doesn't say what it's for, or even if it needs to be activated here, but that might enable some other functionality that improves how wget operates or how it works in some way. And the same for these other ones, libpsl, uh, pcre, pcre2, and finally Val valgrind, which is for the test suite. Now, I will be running tests, um, so it does mean I'd need to, under my rules, my own rules, I'd need to install all of these to, um, well, except for GNU TLS, because I'm quite happy with the OpenSSL um, encryption library. So, um, yeah, I'll be, I would be installing these, but this early on, all I want to do is get some functionality with wget, I'm not interested in anything extra at the moment, unless I find it's something I need. So what I intend to do is to install wget, and at some later point, when all these dependencies have been fulfilled or in a position to fulfill installing them, at that point I'll reinstall wget. Um, you can see there's a recommended option here as well, uh, dependency. And this is to do with certificates for encrypted connections. And you'll see that when we try to connect to HTTPS uh, links, for example, this one, that we'll get a message saying couldn't connect. And it, it suggests a, uh, an option to send to the wget um, command line um, to, to basically disable it, checking for encrypted connections to, you know, whether they're valid or not. Because it can connect, because it's got OpenSSL it uses, or GNU TLS if you decide to use that one. It's just whether that connection's validated against uh, known certificates. So again, I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. I just want to get the copy and paste functionality working, because that helps prevent errors, rather than typing, reading things on one page and typing things on another screen. Um, it just makes things a lot less error prone. So I'm just going to get these first few utilities installed in the minimum possible way and then carry on from there, just start building up the functionality and the usability of the system. Now because I need to rebuild things, I need to keep a track also of not only what needs to be rebuilt, but um, what I've already built. So for example, if I've built a particular package, such as, as an example, uh, libpsl, I don't need to reinstall it if I've already installed it once, unless I've marked it to be reinstalled again for some reason. Um, to get around that, I, I, I've never really known what other people do, but in the past I've tried things from just using the browser so that when you open up a tab, the links obviously change colour to show that you've visited that tab, or, or that link rather. Um, I've used that to some degree of success. The trouble is if you open accidentally a link that you don't mean to open or you open it too soon, you've then got to remember, well, have I really installed that package or not or have I just opened the link and shut it down? So it's not totally foolproof. Um, I did use a spreadsheet once where I had all the dependencies I needed for particular packages in a sort of hierarchical uh, layout which that kind of worked, but the dependencies are kind of 3D because libpsl might not only be required by this package, it might be required by two, three, four, maybe even more other packages. So then there's that um, uh, quandary of like, how do you associate just installing it once, but identify that it's um, a dependency of several packages and, and keep track of whether you have actually installed it and so on. Uh, so that's, yeah, I think, never really been happy with that. I was going to try it again this time, but because um, I'd have to be keeping the spreadsheet, uh, keeping it updated outside of the LFS build, and then once I get the office installed, it, it would be better if it was part of the LFS build or the LFS build. I'd have to transfer that over. So I thought, well, that's all right. It's not a big deal, but it's a bit more, a bit more faffing around. So I just went back to the method I've used most often, which is to print out the contents of the BLFS book, where, so basically it's um, this page here, this has opened up a new window, basically this page here from section four, because all these um, links from here on 
are all the details for each individual package. So all of that to the end, more or less, up to there. I'll print that out. I've, I even formatted it so I've got it in two columns. I double side printed it. So I've ended up with just four sheets of paper with all the packages on. And then as I go through and build them, I can put little notes against each each of these on the bit of paper I've got saying whether it's been well if it's been built and I don't need to do anything more I'll just cross it off if it needs a rebuild um, I can write a little R next to it or I can put little notes saying it needs a rebuild after another package has been built so I've tend to found that way works the best as a way of keeping track of um, dependencies basically some packages might even need to re be rebuilt, although, although they've got all the optional dependencies for that dependent package built, you might find that they need to be rebuilt after another package has been rebuilt um, just to enable some functionality. So it is handy to have somewhere where you can make notes. I mean, yeah, you could even just use a notepad or something or just uh, you know, something on your phone or something maybe, or if you've got a tablet or something, any, any means to keep a record of what you've done so far because believe me it does get quite deep into tracking dependencies and knowing what you've built what you need to build what you need to rebuild and so on so in this case for example wget when I've downloaded this built it and installed it I'll be looking at for, for it on my list um, and it helps here at the top it says in chapter 15 so I could just jump to chapter 15 I'll look for it now, in fact, and I can see straight away wget, and I'll just write a little R next to it saying, you know, rebuild. So I'll know at some point to rebuild it uh, to get extra functionality. I may even be rebuild it two more times um, once to get this certification because that could be quite handy to have that rather than having to put in this extra um, option, command line option and then rebuild it a third time when I've got these others installed or I might find that oh well these haven't got too many dependencies I may, well, may as well install them now um, another reason why I might reinstall packages is for example if I haven't put the dependencies in for the test, test suite so I don't know what I've installed is uh, has been validated against test, the uh, unit tests that uh, come with a package so I'll rebuild it when I've got the dependencies for the test suite so that I can run a full test and prove that what has been compiled is actually um, reliable, a reliable bit of software. 